Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the final review video of the year, at least posting wise. I may make one tomorrow on Spain, but I'm not sure if I will get to that and I will surely not post in the old year 2020. Before we get to any Premier League action, I first need to say a big apology to all Eredivisie fans. I should have put all the results from just before Christmas and the one after Christmas I should have put in the previous video. I got so excited that, you know, I just finished watching the game, went up, did all Premier League and then I raised home. Anyway. We'll have it here and I will do it first. But before that, let's go to the headlines. And yeah, we can start in the area to visit the headline. There is things are getting tighter. Things are getting tighter. It's only one point difference at the moment. So rather interesting there. And it might be a more than a two-way title race as well. We'll talk about that in a little bit. In England, I think the main headline is A, the postponed games. We had two uh, games postponed due to COVID cases, one due to uh, Man City having COVID cases, the other one due to Fulham. And the other one um, uh, is, of course, that the standard of play with having the round so tight in there, it was rather poor this round. Uh, not many goals scored, I think it's just was just about right because Leeds scored a lot and again things are getting tight and the big winner probably is Manchester City although they haven't even played. Let's go run through it. We'll start in the Eredivisie as promised and we had an interesting round where the only highlights I could see was PSV against Fenlo who took actually the lead in the 22nd, uh, but then it was from then it was all PSV. Max, uh, Boscali, Gakpo, and with the last kick, kick of the game, uh, fine score gave a free formal win to PSV. Um, Alkma with a rather big win over Vitesse. Vitesse having been up there and now kind of a little bit losing touch or you know being put in their place if you like uh Alkma was already tuned up at the half then uh Openda pulled one back for Vitesse they thought they had an equalizer 64th but it was called off for offside and then drive makes it 3-1 and Alkma wins that one and then probably the biggest result is that Ajax cannot beat Willem Dwe uh Willem Dwe had a good last season but now not so much and they took the lead in the fourth minute and I think everything is going right but Willem Dway uh, gets an equalizer and that's the way it remains Ajax cannot find a winner and with PSV winning this means things are getting tighter and then we also had a makeup game from the first round and that's the last game of the year oddly enough uh, between Utrecht and Alkmaar which ended in a 2-2 draw uh, Utrecht was uh, one nil up, Alkma turns it around. Uh, they thought they had a winner through Stanks in the 83rd, but then a very late goal through Dalmau gives Utrecht and equalizes. So, also, Alkma cannot really go a little bit further. This means now we have a straight table Ajax one point ahead of PSV. And we'll see, this will be important. Uh, Feyenoord and Vitesse now on 29. There is a distance. I mean, it really seems to be between Ajax and PSV. But, you know, it may, just might be. I think uh, AZ is getting rolling. I think AZ could join up there as well. Um, quite interesting standings, I have to say. And it gets even more interesting because the first week back we get 1v2. Ajax, PSV, top, uh, bottom of the list here, this is the big one uh, that we have been all the way waiting for. And then Sparta against Feyenoord, also a Rotterdam derby. And curiously enough, a week later, and there's a round in, in between a week later, we have a little bit switch off, we get the Klassiker and we get Sparta against PSV as well. So rather exciting uh, beginning to the Eredivisie. Let's rock pre Premier League. I mean, I watched some games, but I have to say, I got so disenchanted very quickly. I mean, Crystal Palace Leicester probably was an uh, entertaining game. I only saw the second half. Uh, I did not see that Ian Nacho missed a penalty early on, but you know, it was kind of even. Crystal Palace, despite the 0-7 against Liverpool, uh, not that bad at the moment. Um, and take the lead through Zaha, but I have to say, that shot Schmeichel is right there in the corner. It's between the post and the goalie needs to have it. 
I thought that Crystal Palace will get a shock win over Leicester, but Harry Barnes late on gets an equalizer. And then I was really curious what Aston Villa and Chelsea will do. And I have to say, especially in the first half, I thought that Chelsea was large, largely a better team. Aston Villa still was kind of fighting with itself um, of where they, what they want to do in this game. Also, I don't like the Aston Villa away jersey that they have, or third jersey, whatever it is. But I have to say, in this case, it actually looked... It made sense, but it just doesn't look like Aston Villa jersey in any way. Um, and in the second half, Aston Villa had a much better performance. They get the equal through El Ghazi. And then, yeah, get, the game was teetering a little bit on the edge. Maybe slight uh, advantage Chelsea, but I have to say, uh, Aston Villa could have also got, got, gotten a winner. was not a bad game, but also not exciting. And then I really wanted to watch Everton against Man City. Got called off, as we said. Arsenal uh, against Brighton, very poor game in the first, first seven, second half. Arsenal does a little bit more and they get the winner through Lacazette, who was just two minutes on the field at that point, um, and can basically confirm the win over Chelsea a little bit there. So maybe Arsenal really on the way of turning it around. Uh, Burnley gets a big win over Sheffield, weird jersey matchup. Uh, Southampton thought they had a lead, was called off for offside, and then that game just petered out. And yeah, West Brom against Leeds, that was the one high point because there was one team showing up. And no, it was not West Brom who got the point of Liverpool. No, 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 no. Uh, Sayas very early on with a horrible back pass where he didn't know where the goal is and he goes into his own net. Ninth minute. Uh, set the game up and then 10 crazy minutes where Alioski, Harrison and Rodrigo make it 4-0. Uh, goal I think for West, West Brom is then called, called off and Rafinha in the 72nd makes it 5-0. Manchester United against Wolves. Tight game. Very tight game. Not a good game. Wolves maybe having even the better chances. Not a bad perform for us by them but in the end it's a stoppage time goal by Rashford that is deflected and it is just calling if you're a Wolves fan because you should have walked with a point all, all, all there but Manchester United manages another win and I know that people are constantly calling for Solskjaer's head and maybe a more experienced coach might get even more out of the squad because it's a it is a really good squad but they're performing well at the moment. So I let's see, they will hit a rough patch again as well. And then Spurs Fulham also got postponed. And uh, then I watched Newcastle Liverpool. And I have to say, if the goals were that much wider, I think it would have been a rout. But in the first time, I think Salah missed it, mi misses one. Um, Firmino Hedda is saved on the line. Uh, by the goalie. So uh, it was one of those games where I think at, at, at the very beginning, New Newcastle tried to do something, but the longer the game went on, the more Liverpool could play over the press of Newcastle, got better into the game, and then it was just a defense uh, of Newcastle making last ditch effort after last ditch effort. Uh, uh, there were some really, really, really tight calls in there, but I have to say that the goalie Darlow and Shea and uh, did have defender share they were everywhere they, they they played really well and i think in the end yes i think if liverpool would have won it one nil would have been fair but given the effort that newcastle put in they deserved to get the point out of this one and yes uh liverpool after the seven nil win two rather disappointing draws against west Brom against newcastle uh you would have expected more from them uh especially because if we now look at the standings yes liverpool is still up there but with the game in hand Manchester united could draw level they will not overtake liverpool unless they really go berserk there um note the chances of winning it it's manchester city without playing actually improved the chance because of liverpool dropping points uh, at the moment we also have less than Everton in there uh, Aston Villa still with two games less is kind of a contender um, lots of movements in the midfield Arsenal now finally mo moving up and just saying on the bottom West Brom and Sheffield United seem to be buried in their West Brom because of their really really poor rating but I think we have to adjust and if we do so we see that Liverpool and Manchester United are basically level Manchester City has a big say in that as well their record is better and 
I want to say it for the first time, if you look at goals forward and goals against, Manchester City has the best defensive record. Uh, very slightly, I think, with all the frailties they have up front, the backline of Manchester City is becoming really, really, really good. Are we seeing a transformation in Guardiola? Just want to point it out there. We have a good, a defensively sound Manchester City, which is something we couldn't say a lot. But yeah, they moving up. It's Leicester who actually falls out uh, from all the way from third down to sixth. Chelsea also falling down, not looking really good there. Um, well, and that there are not many changes in Newcastle just moving ahead of Arsenal because of a game less. We have a one-day break from the Premier League and then a stretched out round. It picks up again on the first uh, with uh, Everton against West Ham and then Manchester United against Aston Villa. That I think is a g that is one. Yeah, probably I should watch that one. I'm uh, really curious what Spurs will do against Leeds because um, I mean the way Leeds is playing this is just made for Spurs counter attacks. But you know. Let's see. Other than that, um, I think it all points to Chelsea against Manchester City, if it can be played. Same thing goes for Burnley against Fulham. So yeah, this was it. Last review video for the year. I tried to keep it short. I have Manchester United on, as you saw. So Manchester United should actually be where Chelsea is and then everything moves around. Just want to say that last. Let me know what you thought about the games that were played in the Netherlands. And in England, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.